just another NMR problem. Now we have new molecular formula and new spectroscopic data that we want to use to find the structural formula. Yeah, you didn't write it down wrong. This should be H3. And it's always very, we talked about that in the previous session. After we write something down, we have to be in the habit of checking what we wrote down. But there's one, uh, I got one pi. I think it's pending on that. Let's see, H6. That's eight. This is one. Which group do you think these hydrogens are in, A or B? A. And this one? B. So here's your guess as to what the structure is, and now we have to make sure it's consistent with the information that we were given. 
So I think you're saying that this is group A, because group A has two hydrogens. And here this would have two hydrogens. And I think you figured out N here. Or did you? Did you figure out the Ns? N equals one and N equals two. N equals one would give us a doublet, and N equals two would give us a triplet. Well, is this N equals one consistent with, with your picture for group A? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, and this seems to be consistent over here as well. All right, I thought that was a problem, but that's actually so far so good. Let's see. This is not what I got, but maybe you're right and I'm wrong. So let's see. Okay, I guess here's my concern. Yes. Notice that group A has a very far left chemical shift. Group A has a very far left chemical shift, which would seem to suggest that these should be on a carbon with electronegative elements. Okay. But this carbon doesn't have any electronegative elements, right? This carbon here doesn't have any electronegative elements. So it's hard to see how it could be pulled so far to the left here. Now, maybe that's a little tricky because it's certainly adjacent to a whole lot of electronegative elements. So maybe it's adjacent to so many that that's still going to pull it to the left. Let's see about this carbon here. Here you've got your group B. Um, here this has two chlorines. Seem like a reasonable number here? Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe your guess is right. I'm thinking this is not right. Let me check the answers. Yeah, that's actually not a bad guess. But the big problem is hard, it's hard to see how we can get pulled so far to the left on a carbon that's not attached to any chlorines, even though it's adjacent to many chlorines. So let's look at a different way of working this out. I, I think this is starting to be a hard problem. So going back to fragment A here. Are you working on something? No, I'm not. I don't know how to do it. Okay. Going back to fragment A here, I'll start by putting in a carbon. Now I'm going to try to very carefully try to build up this fragment. Now I know there's two hydrogens in group A. That gives me two choices. One choice is to put both hydrogens on the same carbon, or the other possibility is to draw two separate fragments, one with one hydrogen each. How can we decide which of those we're going to use? Well, looking at this really huge chemical shift, mm -hmm. how can we get a huge chemical shift like this? This is a chemical shift you wouldn't get even by being attached to one chlorine. Really, the only way to explain a huge chemical shift like this is if the carbon's attached to two chlorines. Mm -hmm. A single chlorine would just put us less than five. All right, well, there's no way I can put two chlorines on this carbon here, because then that would be the whole molecule. So it's looking like this has to be two separate CH fragments, two separate CH fragments, each with two chlorines each. So we can't assume when we see two hydrogens that they're both on the same carbon, although that's usually been the case in the past. This is really the only way to explain this huge chemical shift of 6.07. All right, and now we want to try to build on these fragments. One thing that, that should immediately jump out at me now is there's only one carbon left. This is only a three carbon molecule. So if I have these two fragments, there's only one carbon left. So I can put in a carbon here for this to be attached to. And how many hydrogens should be on this carbon? Uh, let's 
let's see. Now remember, we're working on group A. Working on group A. I guess I can see where you thought too. But we're working on group A here, and N is one for group A. So do you see what that means? There can only be one hydrogen here. So I can put this one hydrogen over here on this. Um, and now, who else is attached to this? Well, this carbon must also be attached here, because it's only three carbons total. This carbon must also be attached to this carbon, because we only have three carbons total. So now we can start to build out the whole molecule. 